pleasant it is for us to be here today. Amen, amen, amen. Let's clear all hearts and our minds as we go before the throne of grace this morning. Amen, amen. Asking that all of this week's tests and trials and ups and downs uh, would be rid of us as we come before our Father to bless him this morning. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Yahshua, the Prince of Melchizedek this morning, the Prince of all righteousness, we come before you this morning, Lord God. We come before you, Lord God, asking that you would wash us in the precious blood of Jesus Christ yet one more time. Cleanse us, O oh God, from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet this morning. That as we got up to give you praise and to give you glory, that it would be a sweet fragrance in your nostril, that it would be melody to your ears this morning, O oh Lord, our Father. We bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you this morning for being so good to us, and we thank you, Lord God, for being so kind. We just thank you, God, that you are God. We thank you this morning for your place in the kingdom. We bless you this morning because you sit high and you look low. We bless you this morning because you are righteous, God. We thank you this morning that you judge fairly this morning. We thank you, oh God, that you are a God that is slow to anger this morning. We thank you for your patience this morning, oh God. We thank you that you loved us in such a way that you called us friend this morning, Lord God. And so, God, we got up this morning to give you praise. This praise, it is intentional unto you this morning. We give our hallelujahs to you. We give our thank you, Jesus, to you. We bless you, oh God, from everything that is within us. Oh, Oh, we come to magnify you and we come to glorify you this morning Lord God we come to make your name great in all of the earth this morning we come to shabak you this morning we come to todai you this morning oh God we come to lift thy name on high we come to bless you from the depths of our soul saying thank you Jesus Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for starting us on our way, oh God. Thank you that when we got up this morning, that we were enclosed in our right mind this morning, Lord God. Thank you that when we put our feet on the floor, we didn't need any assistance this morning. And thank you, oh God, that nobody had to help us this morning. And so for that, we give you praise, oh God. God, uh, we give you glory, oh God. Uh, nobody like you in all of the earth. Uh, none could touch us like you, oh God. None could deliver us like you, oh God. And so we come to bless you. Father God, we commit this service into your hand this morning, oh God, that you would yield us to your will this morning, that you would yield us to your way. We welcome you in the room this morning. Come on in the room, Jesus. Come on and move by your power. Come on and move by your spirit, oh God. Oh, spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Descend now from from heaven. Uh, send your Shekinah glory this morning. Uh, rest on us, Jesus. Uh, come in and heal us this morning. Come in and deliver us this morning. Come in and set us free this morning. Oh, God, like only you can. Uh, like only you can, oh, God. Uh, and when you've done it, we shall be careful to give you the praise. We shall be careful to give you the glory and the honor because it is due your holy and righteous name we lift up your manservant this morning touch him oh god touch him oh god use him like never before for your glory oh god 
God. For your glory, oh God. Oh, we bless you and praise you. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. 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 Amen. Amen. And amen again. Amen. Amen. That's the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. He's merciful. He's a great God. As we come before him today and on our communion Sunday, we're grateful to God for his many blessings. Thank you, Lord. We just worship him today because he's a Hallelujah. faithful God. Amen. Yes, he is. He's a faithful Thanks. God. Yes, we is. call him faithful. Yes, we do, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.
worship you today, Jesus. We worship you today. You are a mighty God. And to you we give thanks, glory, and honor, and praise. That is due to your name. You are mighty to save, mighty to save. That's who our Savior is. Amen. Yes, God. Here we go. Well, everyone needs compassion. Love that's never failing. But let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of the Savior, the hope of nations. My Savior, oh my Savior.
Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God's not God. dead. No. Hallelujah. He's still alive. Praise God. Praise he rose. God. And he conquered the grave. You can't find his body. You can look for everybody else. And they're there. But Jesus rose. He rose and he's coming back. He's coming back for prepared people. He's coming back for you, and he's coming back for me. We thank, we thank the name of Jesus. We thank him and we praise him. We're going to read our scripture. Remain standing. Mark 11, 15 through 24, and we're going to read alternatively. Everybody's going to participate today. Amen. And it reads... On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. And would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him, because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the root. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Amen. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for prior, believe that you have received it, and it will be your 25th together. That's it. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Yes. God is good. He's mighty. He's awesome. He's a deliverer. He's a healer today. And that's who he is. He's all that and more. We just sang about how faithful our God is. And we're going to continue to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. It's Black History Month. It's also like they say, love month is everything. It's a whole lot of things packed into the, sh the shortest month of the year. Amen. Don't take your seats. We're going to sing. We're going to sing. We're going to sing. We're going to sing. We're going to rejoice. Soon and very soon, amen. we are going to see the king. Is that right? Amen. 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 So, old one from Andre Crouch. Yes, it is. Here we go.
it Grace seems like God. a long time. Grace We've been talking God. about it. if you've been saved for over a decade, over two decades, over three decades. They've been talking about Jesus is coming soon. Amen. And it's true. He is. Yes. But you have to understand, our time Ooh, is not his no. time. Amen, amen. So what might be a thousand years to us is like one day to God. That's right. So we're going to keep on waiting. Hallelujah. And while we're waiting, we're going to trust him, we're going to believe him, we're going to serve him. Yes. That's who God is. He Praise deserves God. All the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We're all going to worship the Lord in our giving at this moment. Amen. So I'm going to call, am I calling Brother Ricketts? Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> he knows why. I ain't going to put him on his spot. I'm just saying. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Praise amen. The Lord. Amen. 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 All right, we are going to partake in something that we we can all put our hands to. We can all take uh, part in. So uh, let us let us bless God. Bless God. Oh, mighty God, God our Father, I want to thank you, Lord, first for allowing us to be in your house this morning. Lord God, for those who even still couldn't make it in this morning, I ask your blessing upon them. Yes. Your Lord God, your servants are about to stretch forth their hands to give you back some of what you've blessed them with, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will bless it, Lord. Make it stretch, dear Lord God, to do your work. And dear Lord God, as we Continue your work with whatever you have blessed us with, Lord God. I pray, Lord, Lord, your people would benefit. And dear Lord God, I just ask your blessing. In your mighty name. Amen. We do have our pledge, do we? All right. So, so let's read together. According, According to, to Malachi, Malachi 3, 3, 8, 8 9, 9, and 10, 10 we believe, believe in these words to be true and credible. And, and as, as we give today's tithes and offering, we are believing God for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, getting money to pay our bills, debts canceled and demolished, royalties received, money paid back, loans paid off. I shall lend and not borrow. I shall prosper and be in good health. I shall give and be blessed. It's offering time. I will praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will give cheerfully in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
I believe before we sing this last one and hear from Elder Myrie, I just want to say happy birthday to Brother Rudy today. Should, should I tell him what you did earlier? Should I tell him what, should I tell him what they did earlier? All right, I'll leave it alone. I'll tell y'all off camera. The rest of y'all are here. I said, Lord, it's his birthday here, a year older. Auntie Joyce, I'll tell you later. Lord, have mercy. I said, because you're a year older, that's why you. All right. God bless you, Brother Rudy. It's a blessing. A lot of people don't, some religions don't celebrate birthdays, but we know it's a blessing to be a year older. Absolutely. Or like I like to say, more mature more mature in the Lord. Amen. And hopefully with age comes wisdom. Amen. And it is Kalia's birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday tomorrow, Kalia. <laughs> it's good to have everyone in the house today. We just want to worship him. God, we ask you to turn it around. Amen. I'm praying that God come and turn this thing around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. I'm calling on the name yes, yes. that changes everything. Yes. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Turn it around. All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. I'm praying God come and turn. 
your promises are yes and amen. So we glorify you today, Jesus. God, as we are about to hear from your manservant, touch his lips, Lord. May the words that utter from his mouth be sweet and be sound. May we hear from you today, Jesus. Use him as a vessel. Use him as an instrument. Yes, we Lord. need to hear from you today, Jesus. Praise God. Set Praise self God. aside and lift you up, Lord. Hallelujah. There's no big eyes, but only you are big. In this season, Lord, we thank you today. Thank we you, worship Jesus. you today. Yes, we Lord. lift you up because you deserve the glory. You deserve the honor and all of the praise. Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise when you don't have any other name to call, call on the name of Jesus. 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 Lord, we call in the name of Jesus. We believe you, Lord. We thank are our risen Savior. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise congregation, God. Elder Myrie, Elder Myrie, congregation. from the easy read version because I want you to get something out of this. Jesus answered, have faith in God. The truth is, this is Jesus talking. You can say to this mountain, go mountain, fall into the sea. And if you have no doubt in your mind and believe that what you say will happen, this is what got me. Then God, then God, then God <laughs> will do it for you. God's turn it around. All of my hope is in the name of Jesus. You may be seated. Whew. God's turning it around. I don't know what you got going on in your life today, but God is turning it around. It's with honor that I stand before you and I want to greet the man of God, Pastor B, Lady T, my lovely wife, all of the members. Of the friends, those online and in house, I want to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. 
my God and my King. I want to say happy birthday to my big brother. Yes. And happy birthday when it comes, Kalia. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. God is turning some stuff around. Um, I, I was talking to my friend Luigi yesterday. Um, and we were talking and he, it wasn't yesterday, I think it was Friday. We were talking. And he was mentioning to me that um, in the Catholic Church, that they would, um, when they go to the Catholic school, what they would do is put your name, when you put your offering, they send you an envelope so you could put your name on it so that you, they'll know how much you give and when you give. And I was thinking about it when he said that. And I said, we do give you an envelope here to put your offering in the offering plate. It's not to check on what you're giving. I just want you to know. I, you see, sometimes when you talk, certain things comes to you. And I said, it's not for that. It's because we want at the end of the year to give you a letter stating what you have contributed to the congregation, to the church, so you can write it off in taxes. All right, so I just want you to know, if you don't want to put your name on it, it's all right. But it's just for you to get what Uncle Sam, what is due to you, because it is tax write-off. We're legit, so it's tax write-off. All right, so I just want you to just wanted to say that I just when I was talking to him I it came to me pastor sometimes we do certain things that don't even realize you know so I just want you to know that but I'm here and I'm thanking God for his blessings and um, I've been just feasting on God and his love next week is Valentine's Day oh if you don't have a valentine let me tell you jesus will be your valentine <laughs> oh my god i'm telling you I, I i told i think i told you all the story again I, I, I already i'm gonna tell you the story again if i didn't tell you before there was this lady that was going to church and she would tell everybody i don't need no man i just need jesus I don't need no man, all I need is Jesus. And they said her house caught on fire. And a man was, was running out the house naked. The neighbor said, there go Jesus. <laughs> but we know that the human being is set up in a way that we do need a partner if that's the will of God. So we, I know you all love Jesus, but listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. <laughs> Listen to me, God is about to turn some things around. He's going to turn something. So next week, as we always do on Valentine's Day, you will hear from my wife and I. We will sit down and you come and we're just going to chit chat. We're going to chit chat. We, we're going to talk about the love of God and the love of all kind of love. Puppy love, dog love, all kind of love. We're going to talk about it next week. So invite a friend. We're just going to be real and just get into it. Is that all right? All right. All right. We're in a race, in case you haven't noticed. We're in a race. And the good thing about it is not the race. It's not a hundred meter sprint. It's a long distance race. And I, as I was just reflecting, I remember three weeks ago, Pastor B preached about the fact that you got to Take off the heavy weights, those things that are holding you back. And I, and I thought about the fact that when the athletes get ready to run, they will get on the field and they will be in their warm up, in their sweats, and even in their sneakers. But when they got ready to run, Pastor, they got to lay those things aside because they're too heavy. They're too heavy. I'm going to take my time. I know we have communion today. And they laid aside because it was time to run. So Pastor B reminded us to drop the extra baggage. And then Pastor T showed up because now we're in the race. And when you're running, it's a distant race. But every time, everybody's in a pack together. And there comes a time when you got to leave the pack 
You got to start to distinguish yourself. So she said, it's time to move forward. Meaning don't stay in the pack. Don't stay where everybody else is. It's time for you to start moving forward. And I said, my goodness. You see, for you to move forward, you got to trust what you know. That you have trained hard enough. And when you make this move, you're going to be able to sustain it. And so I came this morning to tell you the way you're going to sustain this move is to have faith in God. Only by having faith in God that we can make it. So in the scripture that was read today that I just finished reading, Jesus said, have faith in God. The truth is you can say to this mountain, they were looking at a mountain. There was a mountain. And if you read the scriptures coming from Mark chapter 11, up before Jesus had cursed this fig tree when he passed by and it didn't produce fruit. And then he, we, you read the scripture this morning. So go home and read it and you will catch up. I'm not catching you up this morning. I want you to study the word. You catch up on that. So he's, he was going, he said, if you say to the mountain, go mountain, fall into the sea. And if you have no doubt, in your mind and believe that what you say will happen then god will do it for you i looked at that and i started jumping pastor because i thought it was my fate and what i did was going to get it done but he said it's god that's going to do it the battle that you're facing the obstacle that is in your way it's god that's going to move it he is a mountain mover. He is a healer. He is the deliverer. He is the way maker. All we got to do is believe and have no doubt because the God we serve, he specializes in things that seems to us that is impossible. So he said, I tell you, ask for what you want in prayer if you pray then you will ask for him and if you believe that you have received those things then it is yours what are you asking god for what have you been praying for we were in this daniel fast i came to tell you whatever you ask god for it is yours so looking at this Scripture, so far, this, Jesus spoke this about 2,000 years plus ago. And to be honest with you, I've never heard of anyone saying to a literal mountain, move, and I heard that it transplant somewhere else or went to the sea. So this is more of a metaphor. Uh, metaphor. Thank you, my dear. A metaphor. In ex in accent, this is an example. The mountain represent any obstacles in your way. He said, any obstacle that you have in your way, you can tell it to go to the sea, which meaning he's saying you could say move. And it will obey you if you don't doubt. What do we do when we're faced with an obstacle or a mountain in our life. What do we do? Give me my first option. We have about, we have a few options. The first option when you're faced with a mountain or an obstacle is to go around the mountain. However, mountain comes in chains. And this option can lead you far and wide of your purpose in life. In essence, if you decide you want to go around that obstacle, it will lead you away from your purpose. And instead of you going into your purpose and going into the devil's camp and take back what belonged to you, you keep on going around. That's why you see sometimes we pray and we are asking God, God, what do you want me to do? And he's saying, you just got to get rid of that stuff. 
and we know what it is but we're trying to get around it we don't want to deal with it we know there's it's an issue in our life and it is stopping us from walking in our purpose from going where god wants us to go but we keep on trying to go around it don't avoid it you got to face it the second option give me my second option here caitlin the second option is to go over the mountain mountain however are high and stony snowy and this option can lead to death or serious injury thus ending or delay your purpose in life how many of us have seen folks who had an obstacle a problem and never dealt with it and so as they tried to go over it all of a sudden it crippled them an issue that you never dealt with what you should have dealt with long time ago and all of a sudden it causes at when a time when you're excelling it cripples you because you never dealt with it or it even costs you your death because sometimes you've been powerful but all of a sudden people said i don't trust you no more because you never dealt with that issue never dealt with the obstacle that was in your way and then the third option which is the worst option of all the third option perhaps the worst of all is to come to a standstill before the mountain in this option the mountain has stopped all progress the wall the fulfillment of your purpose in life think about it god has placed unique gifts and ability inside of us i can do all things through christ all things not something but all things yet still i don't do it because I'm afraid. I don't do it because I came to a standstill and I realized God is telling me, get rid of that relationship, get rid of that job, and I don't want to do it. And so I'm at a standstill, wanting to go forward, but will not get rid of that thing that is in my way. And God is saying, you need to move it. So you can walk in your purpose and walk into what God calls you to do. The good thing about it this morning is that he didn't leave us with just three options because all three options is all what you can do on your own. Give me my fourth option. I should have named this subject the fourth option. The fourth option that Jesus offer is to have faith. The Bible tells us quite clearly, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Jesus said, have faith in God and speak to the mountain. I came to tell you, you need to speak to your obstacle. You need to speak to your problem. Speak to that situation. The problem is we're too quiet. I just wish God will take this away from me. I just hope God will take it away from me. If it's God's will, then I would have it. Speak to it. Speak to it. Mountain, you got to go. You got to go. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I can do all things. Because it's not on my, by myself. It's not by my might. But by the spirit of God. Instead of relying on fleshly zeal or option one and two. Or of the dead end of option three. The fourth option brings God into the equation. In essence, the reason why we haven't accomplished what God wants to give to us. We haven't brought him into the equation as yet we think it's because i went to school and i got this we think it's because i got the right education so i will get the right job 
but it has nothing to do with it. It has to do whether or not you bring God into the equation. So whatever you want to do, whether big or small, you got to bring God into the equation. If we are experiencing obstacles in our life today, the smart thing to do is to bring God into our equation. In John chapter 6, 5, and verse 6, when Jesus looked out on a situation that seems impossible, I was going to preach, we find this story in John, in pretty much all the gospel, and in Matthew. I was going to come to you from Matthew chapter 14. I'll do that another time. But Jesus had heard that John the Baptist was dead. And he wanted to isolate himself. He wanted to spend some time because John the Baptist was his cousin. And sometimes I believe we forget that Jesus, although he was fully God, he was fully human. So his cousin was murdered. And he tried to isolate himself. And all of a sudden the crowd heard that he went to the desert. And they showed up. I just want you to know, if you want a miracle to work in your life, you better show up where God is. God will take time out and he will give you whatever you want. They showed up and the Bible said that God looked at them and he was moved with compassion. For God to move with compassion, you just got to show up. You don't have to do nothing but show up and God will turn your stuff around. So the Bible said in John, I'm coming from John account this time. When Jesus looked out and saw that large crowd and had a, that arrived, he said to Philip, where can we buy bread to feed them? And no doubt Philip must have looked at God, looked at Jesus and said, you got to be crazy. You must be nuts. Are we going to feed all of these folks? Well, hear what the Bible said. He said this to stretch Philip's faith because he already knew what he was going to do. Can I tell you something? God will not ask you a question he don't already have the answer for. Let us be reminded of what the situation is here now. Matthew, a matter of fact, they said it was 5,000 men. Matthew said that they had women and children also. So we, we, we can do a little calculation here. The amount of um, money it would have cost or the amount of bread to feed them. It seems impossible because it's 5,000 men. And let's say they have 5,000 women with them because wherever the man is, the woman will show up. Oh, yeah, you all don't believe that. It's going to be Valentine's Day. I will elaborate on that next week. 5,000 men show up, say they are married. Since we're in church, they're married, so they have 5,000 wives with them. In the Jewish religion, one of the blessings was to have kids. So we figure it out that they may have had about five. Some may have had seven, some may have eight, but let's average it to about five. So I think that five times seven, it's what, 35? So think about it. I'm going to put it easy. 30,000 people showed up. 30,000 people show up here this morning. I could ask pastor to go get Mama Luz, but I don't know if we could feed them because we weren't prepared for them. 30,000 people showed up. A matter of fact, the Bible said that he, the, the disciples were saying to him, it's time to send them away. Because send them so they have time to go by because they didn't have no Wendy's 
or no Burger King that opened 24 hours. And no doubt they were like when I was growing up in Jamaica, where after certain hours, if you didn't get anything from the shop, it was closed. It's not like those who grew up pastor in New York City and over here in New Jersey, where they can go to the bodega and any hour of the day and get something. We couldn't. So Jesus is saying, so, so the disciples say, send them away. How many times people show up and ask you to pray for them and you want to send them away? Oh, how many times we figure out we're not equipped enough to pray for somebody? And Jesus said, we ain't going to send them away. You got to feed them. That's what we're going to have to do. After we have dropped those things and we're moving forward, we're going to have faith that whatever situation arises, we can handle it. We're going to be able to take care of it because with God with us, we are well equipped. We can move mountain. We can speak to mountain and say go and it will go. So it was a whole bunch of folks. It wasn't just a large crowd. It was a very large crowd. And Jesus said, feed them. And Philip started running around trying to figure out, how can I feed them? And the Bible said they found five barley loaves and two fish. It was a little boy's lunch, they said. So it couldn't have been much. And even if the little boy ate like I ate, it couldn't have been much because even though I like to eat, my mommy wouldn't give me too much. He gave me enough so that he think he was right. Whatever little you have, your little bit of faith, God can use it to move mountain, to feed people. He can use your little bit of faith to make a difference to over 30,000 people. All you got to do is give it to him. He said to Moses, what do you have in your hand? He said, to put it down. Whatever little talent you have, whatever little bit of education you have, whatever little bit of money you have, if you ever give it to Jesus, he will turn it around and use it for his glory and for your blessing. So they got the little bit of, the little bit of bread, the little bit of fish. I don't know how big it was, but it's for a little boy. And so when they got it to him, Jesus took it and he blessed it. And after he gave thanks to it, he said, feed the people. It's time for us to feed the people. It's time for us to feed the people. The church has a bad rep. I don't care what rep it want to have. We are God's people. And we are going to do what we're supposed to do from a pure heart. And God is we're going to turn our situation, our community, our neighbors, our co-worker, our friends, our family. He will turn it around if we just commit ourselves to say, God, use me. God, use me. God, I don't know much, but use me. I don't know what I was going to turn out, but use me. I might not be much, but use me. Because God, you are a multiplier. So you understand why this question may have seemed crazy to Philip. Because it's 30,000 people and they weren't planning for it. They weren't prepared for it. In fact, because they were so concerned, Jesus said, 
give them to eat. We got to be concerned when we see people are dying. We got to be concerned when people are suffering. We got to be concerned when people are lost. When you hear the talk about how church is, is no good, you got to be concerned. Because we can make a difference. Did you hear what I said? We can make a difference. All we got to do is have faith in God. And he will show you what to do. What Jesus was saying to them. That he said, the Bible said that Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do when he asked the question. He really didn't need the disciples' help. He just wanted them to realize and recognize of the true, what the true level of their faith were. Thus Jesus asked them this question in order to prove them. He knew that there is just something about a new problem that exposes where our faith is. You see, when there's a new problem arise, all of a sudden, most of us, we lose our faith. But when you've been there, Pastor, when you have experienced him more, you understand it doesn't matter if it's a new problem or a new situation. You know that he is an obstacle remover. You know that he, when God healed you before, when whatever the doctor say, you know he can heal again. When God deliver you before, you know no matter what you're going to, he'll deliver you again. If God protected you before, you know he will protect you again. Because when you've been with God, you've proven him to be a man of his word. And whatever he say, he will do it again and again and again. Now we don't need to go around be frantic about how to solve the problem. Philip began to frantically search high and low to the crowd, ramming through and through everything, food so that they could find food. In other words, they were seeking to solve this problem through a natural means rather than just say, Jesus, you know, you can do all things. Speak the word and the multitude will be fed. That's all they needed to say. That's all you need to say. I'm giving you the fourth option this morning. Whatever you're going through, say, God, it's up to you. It's in your hand. Speak the word, God. I want a financial breakthrough. God, you better give me a breakthrough because you said nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Look what happened to Elijah or oh, Ezekiel. It's Ezekiel. In Ezekiel chapter 30, um, 37, the Bible said that he was there in the land of dry bones. He said, then the hands of the Lord came upon me and brought me to out in the spirit in the midst of a valley. And it was full of dry bones. And he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there was very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And I told you, God will not ask you a question that he don't have the answer to. And he asked Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? If it was us, well, God, you know, based on what I've learned and based on my education, I don't think it is possible because not only are they dead, but they are very dry. But the prophet turned it around. He had faith in God and he said, God, you know. Whatever problem, whatever situation, whatever you need from God, 
He knows. And he will tell you whether or not he'll give you the next move. It seems impossible for that, that those dry bones to come alive, but he knows. And so he gave him another instruction. When you meet your mountain, when you're standing before your mountain, and you don't know what to do, don't try going around it. Don't try go over it. And don't just stand there. You got to speak to it. You got to have faith and speak to it and said it must go. I want that business to come through. It must come through because God said it. It settled it and I believe it and I give him the praise for it. I don't want us to make the mistake that Philip did with a new problem trying to fix it on his own. We need to instead give it to God. And so in closing, I heard a preacher said the other day, when you hear the preacher said in closing, you know it's another 20 minutes. <laughs> I won't go 20 minutes, but in closing, our intention is to walk by faith. I told you we are in a race, and it's a long distant race. And in this race, we're challenged to move. It's time to move. So in essence, we're going to be doing stuff that nobody have never done before. It ain't going to look like the regular stuff because it's time to move. We're going to have faith like Peter did. Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Oh, you all ain't hearing me. You all ain't hearing me. If it's you, Lord, and you say, come, it's impossible to walk on water. But you said it, I'm coming. Oh, you said it, I'm stepping out on it. And I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Never had it been done before. Man have never walked on water before. And when I look throughout the scripture, I don't remember seeing it done after that. But he did it. I want you to know we're about to do stuff. As long as God say, come, we're going. As long as God speak the word, we're going to do it by faith. It, people will say it's impossible, but nothing is impossible for God. Because my God, he specializes in things. That seems impossible. And he can do what nobody else, no mommy, no daddy, nobody else can do because it's all God. The good thing about it, when Peter began to walk, he began to walk in the water. And he got distracted. Even if we get distracted, thank God, he's a merciful God. He'll grab us. Ah, you all ain't hear me. I said he'll grab us and he'll pick us up. And to be honest with you, I don't know how long Peter was walking on the water. I know sometimes we think that it's two seconds, but it seems like it was a long time. Because the Bible said Jesus met them in the middle of the sea. They were in the middle. And the last one of the recording, I think it is John, he said, as soon as he, they got on the boat, they were at shore. So he'd been walking for a while. He'd been talking with Jesus for a while. No wonder he must have been saying, wow, this seems funny. What a good thing. I'm doing something nobody has ever done before. Because you say, come. My God, we're about to go into areas. We're about to minister in areas that have never been done before. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God is about to do if we just have faith in God. Stand with me. Have faith in God. Because if we have faith in God, Lord. we can say to the mountain this morning, 
we can say to that sickness, we can say go, and it will go. Brother Carl, I had a friend whose wife, Stephanie is her name, was a doctor. She had COVID and everything, lungs and everything, they said collapse. And they said she, the, the situation that she's in, they can't even operate on her. And the gender man said, only God. Hey, you all didn't hear me. Only God. And I like it when we get to the point where we understand it's only God. So when it happened, only him can get the glory. Yes, yes, yes. He can do what nobody else can do. And so this morning, whatever you're facing with, whatever obstacle, it can be a marital problem. It can be a financial problem. It can be an emotional problem. Whatever obstacle you're facing this morning, have faith in God and don't doubt in your mind. Believe that what you say will happen and God, it's God doing it. You all ain't hear me. It's God doing it. children of Israel was about to take Jericho. It had walls. And it was impossible to penetrate it. But they did something that was impossible. But guess what? Like Peter, Joshua heard the word of God. And he did just what God said. How can you take down a wall by marching? Because you have the wall tear down with you. Because you have Jesus with you. Nothing is impossible. You all didn't hear me. I said with God, nothing in your life is impossible. Nothing is impossible. He can heal you. He can deliver you. He can set you free. Nothing is impossible. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I am not against doctors and I'm not against psychologists. I went to school to be a counselor. So I understand, but no psychologist, no counselor can get in your mind unless you get Jesus in it. He's the only one that can bring change. He's the only one that can change your situation. If you ever give it to him this morning, if you ever give it to him this morning, and if you ever say, God, it's in your head, speak to him. Speak to him. He will do it. Oh, hallelujah. Our God is awesome. He can move mountains. Yes, Lord. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Our God is awesome. Our God Pray for awesome. Stephanie. My God 
we can pray for all the prayer requests that we have on the road in the park. I'm going to call you to pray at this moment. Jesus, we yes, come Lord to you, Jesus. Father. We ask you, God, that you would send your healing virtue Jesus. even now, God, that you would go to that hospital room even now, God, and that you would touch her body, Father. Yes. That, yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would defy the medical reports yes. even now, God, that your healing virtue would flow, Father, that her lungs will be able to inhale and exhale even now, God. And, Father, we ask that you would touch her husband, Father, that, God, that you would give him faith even and now God yes, that Lord yes. God that you would give him those words to speak to her body father yes. where the enemy is coming in father we're going in even more yes, God Jesus. we're going in by the power of oh, your might yes, God Jesus. who can oh, stop you God who can oppose you God right. you're all right. power right. father you said healing is the children's yes. bread father yes, yes, and father you said it healing is the children's bread father and the bread is the word of life father so we send your word even now God we send your healing word even yes, now God Lord. we send it we God send it. We, we send it, send it by we you Jesus it, and father it. if there's any among us even Jesus. now God that is craving that is healing for more of you father yes, I ask Jesus. them God that you would touch them even now God that you would touch them father that you would heal and that you would deliver them yes, even Jesus. now in the precious name of Jesus Amen. Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. God is awesome. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may be seated for a moment. We're getting ready for communion. And if you're in right relationship with God, and if you're in right relationship with your fellow man, we ask that you participate at this time. Communion is for those who have been with God, who have saved. As believers, we are part of something that is eternal. We are part of a story that God has been revealing piece by piece over time. Through communion, we are joining with, him, with Christ himself and one another with believers throughout the centuries, believers yet to come after us. It is a beautiful moment that you unite us as a bride of Christ. As a church, our observance of the communion is both a blessing and a biblical mandate. As one of the two ordinances given by Jesus, the other being baptism. Is, a, is it universal? It is universally observed by every church and denomination, although we do it in different ways. So at this time, let's, those of you who are participating, I'm going to ask you to kind of move a little bit closer. See, Pastor B don't know everybody, and he's going to come and help me with this. So come on here, Pastor B. And Pastor B is going to bless Amen. So if you're going to participate, just come on a little bit closer so that he knows who is going to be participating with us. Praise God. First saw the light and the burdens of my heart away. It was there. Often as ye do this, do this in remembrance of me. So, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the bread that represents your body, O oh God. The scripture says that they broke it and they took the bread. And so we lift it up before you today, O oh God, yes, that as we take this bread, that it would be a symbol of your body. The blood that was shed on Calvary's cross is a representation of what we shall take today. 
So as we take the bread and we drink the cup today, oh God, we do this in remembrance of you. But Father God, before we come before you, we don't want to take it unworthily, oh God. So we ask that you would wash us in the precious blood of Jesus. Father God, that you would forgive us for any sin of omission or commission that we have done knowingly or unknowingly that in the mighty name of Jesus, that this would be as praise rendered unto to you that it would be acceptable our Lord and our strength we thank you we thank you that you came and we thank you that you died and we do this in remembrance of you in Jesus Christ's name we pray amen amen thank you Jesus At the cross, at the cross, oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. Oh, he was there by me. Oh, I received my sight, and now I am happy. for us. Remember the stripes that he took on our behalf as he suffered under the lashes of the soldiers. We remember his betrayal and crucifixion. Mm -hmm. We remember his death. There's nothing supernatural about the bread itself, but it's a strong reminder of who our Savior is and what he did for us. As we take the bread, we enter into a solemn moment as of consecration and he took the bread give mm-hmm. thanks god we thank you for this bread yes, Jesus. and he break it break your bread 
gave it to them saying this is my body given mm. for you thank you Jesus. do this in remembrance of me we may eat together We often sing that there is power in the blood. Oh, yes. yes and that there is nothing but the blood. Hallelujah. Nothing but the blood can cleanse us mm. from our sins. These beautiful songs are perfect. Should point our heart back to the one who gave all for us. As we drink the cup, yes. we recall that aside from the blood of Christ, we have no hope. We have no peace, no mm. salvation. It is through his blood that we are truly made free and made whole. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is yes, a new testament Lord Jesus. in my blood. It's a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Let's drink together. servant of yours, O oh God, that thought it not robbery to go to the throne of grace on our behalf to receive from us today, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we could receive from you from him today, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you for him encouraging our faith to trust you, O oh God, and knowing that whatever it is that you could do it for us. So, Father God, every virtue that went out from him today, we ask that you would refill him, that you would let his cup overflow, O oh God, that his cupboards would never be bare, that every desire that he had before you, O oh God, that you would hear him, that you would answer it, O oh God, for you said that if he hungered and thirst after you, that he shall be filled. And so we speak to every 
every mountain that is in his way that would cause him to not be able to go around that we're casting it into the sea we're standing in the gap for the man of God today oh we thank you and we praise you and we give you glory now father God as we leave this place, but never from your presence, we ask that the sweet communion and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, that it would rest, that it would reign, that it would rule and abide with this, us, your people, henceforth, now, and forever. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. And amen. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
you were gone.